the fiscal policy is in concern of raising the government revenue and reducing the expenditure if we are going to provide the more uh, financial benefit to one particular sector and not much benefit to another particular sector then it will be like biasing between the sectors if rbi is going to hike the interest rate some people will not go and take the loan from the government right then the money circulation will reduce so easily and slowly the inflation rate will also reduce Hello everyone I am Arun Kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore dear students welcome to this new session on unit number 2 that is government and legal environment so dear students in the previous semester we got to know about government environment and what is the importance of government environment and we also discussed about what is legal environment and why it is important so in this session dear students we will be discussing about few policies so in that the first policy is fiscal policy so fiscal policy refers to the policy of the government regarding its revenues expenditure and borrowings it consists the taxation and expenditure policy of the government yes fiscal policy is nothing but the policy of the government regarding the revenue expenditure and borrowings so in fiscal policy you are going to know what is the revenue of the government and what is the expenditure the government is incurring and what is the total borrowings by the government so in budget and all you are going to know about this kind of factors that is what is the revenue and uh, how much they are going to spend for the development of the society and what is the total borrowings by the government so fiscal policy it contains the details about the revenue expenditure and borrowings by the government and it consists the taxation expenditure policy of the government yes the fiscal policy is also consist of taxation and expenditure policy so what is the taxation policy what is the rate of tax we are imposing are we you know reducing the rate of tax or are we increasing the rate of tax or is there is any changes or is there is any amendments in the tax rates so everything will be included in fiscal policy so physical policy is a concerned with the raising of government revenues and incurring of government expenditure the physical policy is in concern of raising the government revenue and reducing the expenditure so here you can see the physical policy is concerned with the raising government revenue and incurring of government expenditure so raising the government revenue is the main motto or the focus of physical policy so in physical policy whenever they you know start preparing the physical policy so what they'll do they keep in mind that they should or the physical policy should be in favor of increasing the revenue of the government and incurring of government expenditure yes obviously what and all the governments have the expenditures and for what kind of expenditure what amount should be you know given or distributed or allocated so everything will be there in the physical policy so according to reem hickel fiscal policy is the means by which government adjusts its spending levels and tax rates to monitor and influence a nation's economy so what government will do the government is going to adjust the government is going to adjust its spending levels and tax rates to monitor and influence a nation's economy so in fiscal policy the government is going to adjust with respect to the tax and the spending level of the government so if taxes are collecting more what government will do government will spend more money if the taxes are collecting less obviously the government will not be having much money to spend more towards the development of the society at that time what the government will do the government will not spend more money to the development of the society so if taxes are collecting more yes obviously the government is going to spend more money if the taxes are not collecting properly then there will be no money with the government to spend for the development of the society so in physical policy what they will do they try to you know increase the collection of tax and they try to maintain the spending level towards the development of the society moving further impact of physical policy on business or role of physical policy yes physical policy is also going to impact on our business how it is going to impact on our business 
if the government have sufficient fund what government will do the government is going to spend on the development of the society in society only we have the business entities yes obviously on business entities also the government will spend some money if there is no fund at all with the government the government will not at all spend the money towards the development so if there is money yes the government will help the industry people and if there is high rate of tax yes the companies are going to be the losers and the companies the more profit will be given in the form of tax to the government so this is how the government and the physical policy and the business entity have the relationship so the impact of physical policy on business or role of physical policy so how this physical policy is going to impact on our business entity that is what we are going to study now so the development of various regions sectors and industries yes the development of various regions sectors and industries so how this physical policy will help so if they are spending some money yes they'll spend the money in the development of some sectors and some industries so in that form the physical policy is going to help the industries or the business entities next one government often use tax incentives or disincentives to encourage discourage certain activities yes so at the time of preparing the fiscal policy government will be determining about the tax sometimes in order to encourage the industries what government will do the government is going to reduce the tax or sometimes to discourage or to collect more tax they are going to raise the rate of tax they are going to increase the rate of tax so in this way the fiscal policy is going to impact on business entities with respect to the tax either they may impose more tax or they may impose less tax it will be beneficial as well as it is going to be a problematic to the business entities next tax incentives can also help in the increasing demand yes tax incentives can also help in an increasing demand yes tax incentives will increase the demand how it is going to increase the demand if there is less tax we will be charging less price okay the selling price will be less if there is more tax yes the selling price will be more if they give concession in tax rate at the time the selling price will be less and the people will buy more and more products and the demand will be more to the product the government control as well as state offer different physical incentives and encourage industries yes the government is going to offer and encourage the industries through the physical policy by giving some subsidies or by giving some funds to the industries or by encouraging them by providing some technological uh, requirements to the business industries next progressive increases in indirect taxation yes progressive increases in indirect taxation progressive increases nothing but the tax on sales or the tax imposed on the manufacturing goods so if the physical policy is in favor of the industries yes there will be a increase in direct taxation there will be there will be a progress in indirect taxation next physical policy can encourage the investment create jobs for your long term economic growth yes physical policy can increase the investment and it may create job for your long term economic growth yes it is going to create the job opportunities as well as it is going to helpful in the long run to the development of the economy of a particular government so this is how the physical policy is going to help the business entities further monetary policy so now monetary policy is the macroeconomic policy laid down by the central bank it involves management of money supply and interest rate yes monetary policy is all about money so how the banks should manage the money or how the banks should supply the money and how they are supposed to impose the rates on the lending of loan or if they are taking the loan from central bank what will be the rate of interest so everything will be decided under monetary policy so in india monetary policy of the rbi is aimed at managing quantity of money in order to meet the requirements of different sectors of the economy and it increases pace of economic growth yes in indian monetary policy of the rbi aimed at managing quantity of money in order to meet the requirements of different sectors so in india what rbi will do rbi tries to manage the requirement of money with respect to the different sectors 
So if you are going to provide the more uh, financial benefit to one particular sector and not much benefit to another particular sector, then it will be like biasing between the sectors. So the RBI is going to manage in distribution of money with respect to the different sectors. Next, monetary policy refers to the use of instruments under the control of central bank regulating the availability, cost and use of money and credit. Yes, monetary policy is also refers to the use of instruments under the control of central bank regulating and availability, cost and use of money and credit. Yes, the bank simply they can't offer the loans to the you know public or simply they can't offer the loans with whatever the rate of interest they can decide themselves. So for everything they have to take permission with the RBI and every bank or every industry if they want some financial assistance they have to follow the rules and regulations formed by the RBI. The rules and regulations will be formed under monetary policy. Next according to RP Kent defines the management of expansion and contraction of the volume of money in circulation for explicit purpose of attending a specific objective such as full employment. Yes, here the monetary policy it's all about you know spending the money or deciding how to manage the money and what rate of interest should be imposed and how to fulfill the financial need of each and every sector by the government. So moving further though the impact of monetary policy on businesses. So how the monetary policy is going to impact on businesses. So firstly it's going to impact on the monetary policy based on control inflation. Yes, monetary policy is going to control the inflation. So how it's going to control the inflation? See what is inflation? Inflation is nothing but increase in the price of the commodities. Increase in the price of the commodities. When the price of the commodities will increase, everybody is having money. So everyone willing to purchase the product. So at that time what will happen? the price of the product will increase. So at that time, what RBI will do? RBI is going to hike the interest rate. If RBI is going to hike the interest rate, some people will not go and take the loan from the government, right? Then the money circulation will reduce. So easily and slowly, the inflation rate will also reduce. So based upon the inflation, the RBI is going to determine the rate of interest with respect to controlling of inflation. So if there is no more inflation, then obviously they can run the business, you know, very smoothly and they need not to worry about the sales of their particular product. Next one, interest rate. Yes, based on the interest rate, we are going to borrow the loan from the government. If they impose less rate, we borrow more fund. If they impose high rate, we borrow less fund. Next, business cycle. Yes, monetary policy will impact on the business cycle. So, you know, uh, purchasing of raw material, converting the raw material into finished goods and sending the finished goods to the wholesaler and wholesalers, you know, giving it to the retailer, retailer selling it to the customer. So we have a business cycle. In business cycle, if there is no fund with one person, if there is no fund with wholesaler, then wholesaler will not go and purchase the goods from the manufacturer. So it will be a problematic to each and everyone. So if the business cycle is not proper, then obviously not possible to move on of a business. Next one, spending. Yes, so monetary policy is also going to impact on our spending. If you have more money, we can spend more. If you have less money, we can't spend more. Next one, employment. Yes, if the employment is there, then obviously we can lead our life. In case if the monetary policy is not in favor of the public or if it is not in the favor of the business entity, then business entity is not going to hire more employees. Sometimes the business entity is going to cut down the existing employees due to the impact of monetary policy. So this is how it's going to impact on our business. Next, moving further, exim policy. Exim policy is all about exports and imports. It is all about exports and import policy. Exim policy is also known as foreign trade policy. Yes, exports and imports will be happening between two different countries between India and USA or between India and China or between India and Australia. So it's going to happen between two states. So that is why it is called foreign trade policy. So exim policy is renewed every year on the 31st of March. Yes, they're going to renew the exim policy every year that is on 31st 
of March. And the revisions, improvements and new proposals became effective from 1st April of every year. Yes, if there is any changes in the exim policy that will be coming to force from 1st April of every year. Next, exim policy refers to the policy measures adopted by a country with reference to its exports and imports. Yes, exim policy refers to the policy measures adopted by a country with reference to imports and exports. So what are all the rules and regulations we have to do imports and exports? Those rules and regulations are called exim policy. Next, it regulates by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act of 1992. Yes, exim policy is regulated by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act of 1992. Next, objectives of exim policy. So what are the objectives we have? So what are the objectives of exim policy? The first objective to facilitate sustained growth in exports of the country. So hard to achieve large percentage share in the global mercantile trade. Yes, so what is the objective of the exim policy? The main objective is to facilitate the growth in exports. Yes, if we export more, yes, we can compete with the global market. If we can't export more, then obviously not possible to compete with the global market. So the exim policy is going to help our business entities to compete with the global market. Next to provide domestic consumers with a good quality goods and services at internationally competitive price as well as creating a level playing field for the domestic producers. Yes, so this exim policy's objective is to provide a good quality goods and services to the consumers. So for the domestic consumers, that means for the home country consumers, they have intention to provide a good quality goods and services. So if we have easy way of imports and exports so that we can expect a good quality goods and services from other country or by the domestic companies only. Next, to stimulate sustained economic growth by providing access to the essential raw materials, intermediate components, consumable and capital goods required for augmenting production and providing services. Yes, this exim policies is uh, objective is to you know sustain economic growth by providing access to the raw materials or intermediate components consumable. So if they are free, if they have some liberalization to do trade between two countries so that whatever the requirements a business entity have, it can fulfill the requirement very easily with respect to the raw materials. If the raw materials are available in cheaper rate in other countries so that what we can do, we can import the raw material from other country and we can give a good quality of product to the consumers. Next one, to enhance the technological strengths and efficiency of Indian agriculture, industries and services. Yes, to enhance the technological strengths. So nowadays technology is everywhere. So without technology we can't sustain or we can't survive. So if we have the freeness to do trade between two countries so that we can purchase, we can purchase the new technology from other countries and we can adopt the technology in our business units. Next to generate new employment opportunities and to increase the attainment of internationally accepted standards. Yes, to generate new employment opportunities is nothing but if we are providing all the facilities to the foreign companies. So what they will do, they start hiring the employees. So if we are exporting the goods to other countries, what will happen? Yes, the sales will increase. If the sales will increase, yes, obviously we have to hire additional employees. So the additional employment will create. Next to provide quality consumer products and reasonable prices and establish the framework for globalization. Yes, to provide quality consumer products at reasonable price. So if we have a very easy you know, imports and export system, the exim policy, so that we can provide a good quality products to our customers with a reasonable price. So these are all the objectives of exim policy. So in today's class, we discussed about three policies. The first one physical policy, second one monetary policy and the third one exim policy. So in the upcoming classes, we'll discuss with some more concepts. So until then, thank you all.